Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, turn your King James Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8. Jeremiah is Old Testament. He was a prophet of judgment and doom, basically. All right, let's go to verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 1. This is a continuation of the serpent's series. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. Now this is talking about the resurrection. All right, well, let's take a look at the book of Ezekiel, probably the wildest book in all the Bible, chapter 37. This talks about the resurrection. You know, the, uh, the Sadducees, who were the temple priests in the time of Jesus, they didn't believe in the resurrection because they didn't believe in the book of Ezekiel. They only believed in the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. If Moses wasn't associated with it, they didn't believe it. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. This is the resurrection. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. Behold, there was very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord." So I prophesied as I commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. This is the resurrection, people. I mean, when Jesus rose from the dead, there were graves that opened up, and, and the dead, they, they went into Jerusalem and, and taught of Jesus. We're going to cover that, because I think this is a very important point. Uh, let's see. And I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. 
And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Hmm. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 27. Uh, let's see. I guess we're going to go to verse 21. Oh, good. Verse 20. This is the cruci this is get leading up to the crucifixion, the trial of Jesus to leading up to the crucifixion. Verse 20, Matthew 27, 20. But the chief priests, the Jewish priests, not the Catholic priests, but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor, this is Pilate, okay. The governor answered and said to them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he, hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When you hear people tell you that Rome was responsible for the murder of Jesus, they are liars. You know why? My King James Bible tells you in verse 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, that's like a riot, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Who asked for the blood of Jesus? The chief priests, the Jewish priests. Not Rome. Rome didn't, Pilate didn't care about Jesus either way. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. When the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe, and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and with a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. You know, I sure wouldn't want to be that Roman sir, uh, soldiers uh, when uh, Christ returns. What do you What do you think? And after that, they had mocked him. They um, they took the reed off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lot, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, these are Jewish priests, these are not Catholic priests, 
Catholic priests didn't exist. Likewise, also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the reason being is because he took on the sins of the world. Can you imagine that? God the Father turned his back on his own begotten Son because of the sins of the world. Some of them that stood by when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. Here it is. Jesus is speaking Hebrew. And some of these Jews think he's calling for Elias. But he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's not calling for Elias. The Jews didn't even understand what Jesus was saying. Can you imagine that? And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whither Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Why was the veil rent? The veil was ripped in the temple. You see, the high priest had to go into the temple to perform the sacrifice. Only the high priest could do enter into the Holy of Holies one time a year to offer the sacrifice. And if he did it wrong, God would kill him. That's why they tied a rope around his leg, because if God killed him, they could drag him out without having to go in there. Uh, and, and the veil was to separate you and me, sinners, from a holy, righteous God. Why was the veil ripped from the top to the bottom? Because God the Father in heaven sent his only begotten Son from heaven to the earth, and the shedding of his blood ripped away the veil of the temple. Think about that. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Listen carefully. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. I'm sorry, they weren't taking a nap. They were dead. That's a euphemism. They were sleeping. Yeah, they were sleeping. They would have slept for many, many years. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. You see, after Jesus, after his resurrection, many were came out of the graves and went into the Jerusalem and appeared unto many. How's that for a testimony? Now, that when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly. Yeah, I'd be afraid too, people. I mean, especially if I was one of the ones that spit on him, you know. They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Uh, they were a lot smarter than those the Jews, weren't they? So, what do we got here? The resurrection. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 8. Now, I hope I, hope I don't have to go keep reading about the resurrection. I mean, you can you read about the resurrection in the book of Revelation. There's going to be a resurrection. Matter of fact, let's look it up real quick. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. Do you know the things are written in the books according to their works? That's interesting, huh? See, we're not saved by works. We're saved by faith. But I guess we're going to be judged uh, our position by our works. But if you don't have any faith, your, your judgment's going to be, yeah, from your works. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. You know, they, uh, there was a, in World War, at the beginning, at the, uh, in the beginning of World War II, after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, there was a battle near uh, New Guinea. There was a U.S. fleet aircraft carrier called the USS Lexington. It was uh, attacked by Japan. Uh, the United States and Japan duked it out. Japanese lost a small carrier and another large car larger carrier that was damaged. We lost a very large carrier. Tactically, it was a victory for the Japanese, but strategically, it was a victory for the United States because we stopped their advance. And that carrier was not being able to be used at Midway, uh, which was the turning point of the war. But the thing is couple hundred sailors went down with that aircraft carrier. Do you know that they're going to be resurrected one day when the sea gives up their dead? All those that died in the sea, that one day the sea will give up her dead. Think about that. So, back to Jeremiah, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 1. At the time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon. Do you know there's people that worshiped the sun? You know, there's... Uh, you know, what's what's the day after Saturday? Sunday? Not S-O-N day. Not the Son of God day. No. It's the day of the sun. S-U-N day. You know, there's a... Yeah, never mind. I don't want to get into it, but you get the idea. And the moon. You know, witches love to hang out in the forest and they dance naked under the moon. So I've heard. I've never seen it, so it, I don't know. But uh, but they worship the moon. And all the host of heaven. Do you know what the host of heaven is? The fallen angels. Let's take a look. In 2 Kings 21 and verse 5, And he built altars for all the host of heaven, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Deuteronomy 17.3 Well, let's take a look at the whole, yeah. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 1. Thou, thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be found among you within any of the gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in trespassing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods, and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. You see, people worship the sun, they worship the moon, and then the host of heaven. The host of heaven is talking about the fallen angels, people. 
which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. Well, then thou shalt bring forth that man or that woman which hath committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. See, it was a very, Satanism was a very serious thing in the Lord's mind. And I'm so sick of people saying, well, you know, Jesus is love. He doesn't want us to do it, you know. He doesn't want us killing the witches. No, I, I'm sure, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of children that disappear in this country every year without a trace. You know where they're going? They're being killed for Satanism. And shall stone them with stones till they die. You know what? The God, the, the God wanted his government to carry out the death sentence here. Verse 6. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness shall he shall not be put to death. And let me tell you something. It's a very serious thing. You don't commit perjury because if, if somebody committed perjury and tried to get somebody killed and you caught them lying, they were to be executed, the, the one that lied. All right. Back to Jeremiah 8, verse 2. I hope we can finish this. All right, so he's going to take the bones and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven whom they have loved, whom and whom they have served, after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. Do you know what dung is? Uh, after you feed your dog and you take him for a walk and he does number two, that's dung. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family which remain in all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. See, they didn't want to worship the Lord. They wanted to worship the sun, the moon, and the devils. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearken and heard, but they spake not all aright. No man repented him of his wickedness. See, God wants people to repent of their wickedness. And there's a lot of famous preachers running around saying, well, you know, God just wants you to repent of your unbelief. You can keep your wickedness. You just got to believe in the Lord Jesus. Well, guess what? Even Satan believes in Jesus. No, God wants us to repent of our wickedness. He wants us to turn 180 degrees and follow him. You know, if you're following Satan on the left, God wants you to turn around and on the right and follow him. I mean, even the devil believes in God. So what? No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as a horse rusheth into the battle. Yet the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Didn't we just read that about the great white throne? Yeah. How do ye say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Don't you hear the Jews say that? The law of the Lord is with us. 
Lo, certainly in vain. You know what vain means? It means worthless. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. You know why? Because they're going to be widows when the Lord kills their husbands for their wickedness. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. May I never be like that. Please, Lord, protect me from ever being like that. Verse 11. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Is there a time when uh, they're going to be talking about peace? What does Paul say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1? But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Praise God for that. Jesus is the light of the world, right? For ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Deuteronomy, uh, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 11. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Let's read that again. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. What race of people is known for being able to blush? You ever see a beautiful white woman that's chaste, and you tell a dirty joke and she blushes? There's not many of those. I'd seen that when I was a kid, but I haven't seen that lately. I wish somebody would tell the black Hebrews uh, that this doesn't apply to them. They can't. Have you ever seen a Negro blush? They don't. You can't tell. They don't blush. The only uh, race that blushes is the, the white race, the Caucasians. And the, um, uh, like the Japanese, they can turn flush. I mean, if they start drinking, they're, they'll get red on their face. But being able to blush, it's, you know, it's from being ashamed of something. That's... The only race that does that is the Caucasian race. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vines. Uh, grapes was a symbol of Israel. Nor figs on the fig tree. Figs were a symbol of uh, Judah. And the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? 
Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defensed cities, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silent, and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, they took vinegar mixed with gall? Hmm. Yeah. Because he took the sins of the world upon his sinless nature. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they are come and hath, have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents. You were wondering when the serpent part was going to get here, huh? For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which shall not be charmed. And they shall bite you, saith the Lord. You know what, people? When you play with snakes, you get bit. That's, that's how it works. You ever heard of a snake charmer? You know, they, they, they take cobras in India and they put them in baskets and then they weave back and forth and the snake kind of follows them. You know, that's, they call that snake charming. For behold, I will send you serpents and cockatrices among you, which shall not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Now, when they tell you I am black, well, guess what? In the book of Revelation, doesn't Jesus give them white robes? What does white signify? Doesn't it? White clothing, white robes, doesn't that signify cleanse, cleanliness? Well, here they're talking about sin. And he's saying, I am black. Well, if white signifies, hold on, let, we're going to take a look at that more closely. All right, Revelation 6, 11, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a season, and their fellow servants also, and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds, and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed it with white robes, white robes and palms in their hands. Revelation 7, 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white, white in the blood of the Lamb. Hmm. Revelation 19, verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Okay. Back to Jeremiah 8. Verse 21. For the hurt of my daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishments have taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? That was a healing balm. Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? All right, everybody, that's the end of Jeremiah chapter 8 and the serpents. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.